nomination, Wilson Moore wins. Busey is proud to partner with Illinois High School Athletics. Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth since 1868. Busey Bank, member FDIC. The IHSA believes in inclusion and is proud to partner with Special Olympics Illinois to promote unified sports at all IHSA member schools. Contact the IHSA to find out how your school can become a unified champion school. Grace Lake Central, you have two minutes, Grace Lake Central. The NFHS Network is streaming this game live at www.ihsa.tv. So text or call your friends and family that aren't here and invite them to watch. Just log on to www.ihsa.tv. Set up an account and watch live on the phone, on the tablet, on the computer, on TV, via the Apple TV app. The NFHS Network. High school happens here.
Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready for our 3A state championship game. We have two first pitches for you. Let's begin right now as we welcome our Busey Bank kid captain of the game, Ryan Formica of Grays Lake, taking the field. Batting 
second at shortstop number zero, Cooper Malamation. Batting third, the left fielder, number 21, Jaden Fausti. Batting queen up the center fielder, number 18, Lucas Smith. Batting fifth, the first baseman, number nine, Nick Dutina. Batting sixth, the third baseman, number 27, David Cox. Batting seventh, the second baseman, number 25, Landon Tolme. Batting eighth, the pitcher, number 32, Finn O'Meara. And batting ninth, the catcher, number 11, Colin Roche. And here are the rest of the Nazareth Academy Roadrunners. Your umpires for this championship game. Behind the plate, Steve Fess. At first base, Justin Bowling. At third base, Bob Zahara. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and face the colors as Danielle Dawoski, a junior from Seneca, performs our national anthem. It is time for Class 3A Championship Baseball on a gorgeous day in Joliet. And it will match the Rams from Grays Lake Central. They'll bring a 33-7 record into this one, and they will take on the defending 3A champions, the Nazareth Academy Roadrunners, checking in with a 33-6 mark. And hi again, everybody. Dave Bernhardt along with Hall of Fame coach Mark Lindo. Looking to go back to back here. We've already had one back to back champion this year. That was Joliet Catholic Academy in 2A. They'll look to do it here in Nazareth Academy in 3A. And if Nazareth Academy is going to do it here, their defense will be the same as they've been all year spectacular. Hey, good afternoon, Dave. Let's crown a champion. Yeah, Nazareth, they have been as impressive defensively uh, on the left side, up the middle, as you could possibly be. And for Grays Lake Central, their offensive firepower through this tournament are averaging almost 10 runs a game throughout the tournament. So can they put the ball in play enough consistently to force that Nazareth defense to continue to make plays? It's going to come down to the execution of that here this afternoon. Let's take a look at that offense versus that defense. Offensive league for Grays Lake Central. Here's their batting order. It'll be Jack Gervasi along with Luke Mudd and Adam Fitzgerald, the three outfielders, their top three hitters in the order. Chris Rogers will bat fourth. He'll do the pitching today. Riley Pollock at third along with Garrett Gunther 
at second, the bottom three in the order. First baseman Cal Hansen he did not play yesterday. He gets the start today. Sam Cooper's at short and Parker Greenfield behind the plate. The defense we are talking about, the left fielder for Nazareth Academy, Jaden Fowski, Lucas Smith is in center, Luca Fiore in right. That left side of the infield, that's David Cox at third, Cooper Malamazian at short. That's a Big Ten infield, both headed to Big Ten schools. Landon Tomey, the freshman son of Hall of Famer Jim Tomey, is at second. Nick Dertina is at first. Chuck Roche behind the plate. And Finn O'Mara will get the call here in the title game. Let's see what Finn O'Mara has done this season. He's been superlative, a 7-0 record on the season for his ball club. 1.62 earned run average in 39 innings pitched. 76 strikeouts on the season, 24 base on balls for Finn O'Meara. He'll throw a slider, he'll throw a fastball, he'll throw a change, he'll chop out 87, 88 miles an hour, but use all three pitches effectively to try to negate this potent offense for Troy Whalen's Grays Lake Central Rams. So we're ready to crown a champion here. Stay right with us to call the first pitch of the 3A State Championship 2023. The Hall of Fame voice of the IHSA. Here's Dave Bernhard. Well, thank you very much, Mark. There's something about these championship games, and all of a sudden the heart starts beating a little bit harder. First batter stepping in is Jack Gerbasi. Gerbasi will foul off the first pitch from Finn O'Meara. Game time temperature 82 degrees and sunny. The wind blowing out at only about five miles per hour. O'Meara with that little side straddle along the rubber along the first base side. Gerbasi just looks at that ball, hits his left shoulder. He's headed down to first base. Good job by Gerbasi. Stayed in there, his job to get on base. He did just that, so the Michigan State recruit is on base where he is dangerous. Now bring up Luke Mudd. Grays Lake Central got here by virtue of a 9-1 win over Effingham. They did that in convincing faction, scoring in five of the first six innings. And on the other side, Nazareth Academy, a 3-0 shutout over Sycamore. Luke Munn at the plate, he was two for three, a couple of runs scored, drove in three runs yesterday for the Rams as part of their nine hit attack. There goes Jabasi, what a great jump he got. No chance. Ball to center field, he'll hang right there. Well, running right when the foot was picked up. O'Meara did not pay much attention to him. They took advantage of that. So you got a hit batsman and a stolen base. And right away, this offense that we talked about, averaging almost 10 runs a game throughout the tournament, has a runner in scoring position. Gerbasi is 26 stolen base of the year. He was caught stealing yesterday for the first time all season. He's in scoring position for Mudd. Ben O'Meara coming from about that three-quarter arm angle. Tough against the righties. And Gerbasi will steal third base, too, if you don't pay attention to him. He's got 6'7 speed in the 60-yard dash, which is absolutely incredible. You see him checking his outfield right now to know what he will do on a ball in the air. Grayzig Central as a team, very aggressive on the bases, a lot of team speed. Man at the plate, Luke Mudd. He runs a 6-8-60. As a team, they came into this tournament, did the Rams with 123 stolen bases. You talk about being aggressive and creating on the bases. That's the one thing they want to do today is establish the tempo of this game against a team that many people feel, regardless of class, is the number one team in the state, Nazareth Academy. That's why just putting the ball in play and putting some pressure on the Nazareth defense is so important. They've done that early on with a stolen base. Up the middle, Tommy the backhand, the throw will not be in time. First and third for the Rams with nobody out. That was A, a really nice play by Landon Tommy, ranging far up the middle with his backhand and was able to square up his body in the air to make that throw, but too much speed by Mudd. Speed kills the advancement to third base, and because of the hit batsman stolen base, 
And now an infield hit. They have a dangerous situation right now early on in this ballgame to create some runs early. Mudd with 16 stolen bases on the year. Number three hitter, Adam Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald also two for three yesterday with the run scored. Top three hitters in this Grays Lake Central lineup. Five of the nine hits yesterday in the nine to one win. Catches the outside corner. Our home plate umpire, Steve Bessie, Justin Bowling. At first base, third base umpire, Bob Zahara. Fitzgerald, 29 RBIs on the season. The table is set for him to pick up number 30 and maybe more right now. He's got to think, stay back, stay back, and drive the ball. Omira delivers. Omira on top, no balls, two strikes. He said Luke Mudd, good speed, 16 stolen bases on the season. Third is Jabasi. Infield back to concede the run. There goes Mud. The throw. Cut off. Here comes Jabasi home. He's out easily. It went from Chuck Roche to Cooper Malamazi, and he cut it off. And Jabasi gunned down at the plate. What great execution on first and third defense. That will pick you up big time when your defense makes a play. That will be talked about in our open, putting pressure on them, see if they can make plays, and the Roadrunners right there execute incredibly well. One gun, Adam Fitzgerald. He has mud in scoring position. Make that two outs. For Chris Rogers. Strike him out, and then the 2-6-2 two, two put out at home. Amira had allowed the first two runners to reach with the hit batter. A single. Now he's got a chance to get out of this thing. You work on that, those first and third situations all season long. And the way that play works, you have to have that good arm, the accurate arm from your catcher. You have to have somebody who can return it in a hurry. And Cooper Ralamazian may be the best fielding shortstop in the state. Yeah, it's interesting. Obviously, Tomei is a great fielder's owner. I just a freshman. Ralamazian's got the better hose, and that's who they decide to be the cut man. And normally you see that second base making the cut because just has a better angle. No balls, two strikes. Amira one pitch away from getting out of it. Working from the first base side of the rubber. Did he go enough? He did not. Rogers will get another shot at it. See that widescreen picture we have, watch, right as O'Meara gets ready to deliver the baseball in unison. All four infielders stepping into the pitch, getting some movement toward the batter for some timing and getting the hands out in front. Something that's really well taught by Liam Milano and his staff. Called strike three and Rogers. A lot of action in the inning. No runs cross the plate. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Nazareth Academy will come to the plate. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors.
Nazareth Academy won the 3A title last year on this field. First state championship in baseball in school history. They're going to look to duplicate that today. This lineup that Lee Milano will run out there, very similar to yesterday. Luca Fiori will lead things off. Cooper Malamazian in the second spot. Jaden Fowski left field batting third. Lucas Smith, the center fielder, followed by Nick Dertina. He's over at first batting the fifth place spot. Third baseman is David Cox. Then it's Landon Tomey, Finn O'Mara batting for himself, and Chuck Roche doing the catching. Defensively for Grays Lake Central, Jack Jabasi, Luke Mudd, and Alan Fitzgerald, the outfielders on the left side. Third baseman Randy Pollock and shortstop Sam Cooper. The right side occupied by Garrett Gunther along with Cal Hansen. Parker Greenfield returns behind the plate and Chris Rogers get the ball in the championship game. As well he should with an 8-1 record on the season. 42 inter- innings pitched. 1.33 earned run average. Now opponents are hitting below 200 against him from a batting average standpoint, so he can miss some bats. 59 strikeouts in just 42 innings pitch, 26 base on balls. Chris Rogers with a whip, walks and hits to innings pitch of just 1.35. Very effective for this senior that will go to Lindenwood and continue his baseball career. How about these two pitchers today? Earned run averages of 1.62. That's a Finn O'Meara, and then you just called Chris Rogers' ERA of 1.33. Expect a low-scoring game. Rogers will get it up there in the mid-80s, throw three pitches effectively. We've seen almost every pitcher in this tournament have not just two pitches, which would quote-unquote be the old high school norm, but three pitches consistently. Nazareth Academy recall last year, they won 17 straight to close out the season and route to a state championship. Well, the Roadrunners this year won their first 18 games. 35 straight wins before a loss at the end of April. Yeah, that is an incredible streak. That's among the top 10 winning streaks all time in the state of Illinois. Luca Fiore. Look to get the ball rolling. He had one of the nine hits yesterday for Nazareth. Roadrunners left 10 runners on base, and they came in the first five innings of that game. Fiori one for four. That was a 3 to nothing win over Sycamore. It was a 2 to nothing game until Nazareth punched another run across in the top of the seventh. Fiori, the right fielder, as we... Mentioned yesterday, such a young team. Only start two seniors. Rodgers comes in tight, a little too tight. It's 2-0. Oh. Yeah, that shutout yesterday. John Hughes, North Carolina crew, he was just outstanding, allowing just four hits and five innings, no runs. And then Fowski, Jaden Fowski came and just blew the ball by opposing hitters. Waiting on deck is Cooper Malamazian. Rogers from the stretch. Bounced out a couple of times to Garrett Gunther at second base. One gone. And we'll bring up Malamazian yesterday. Shocker. Hitless in four at bats. And why is that a shocker? Because Malamazian. Came into yesterday's game with a 569 average. <laughs> That's amazing. Mm. 17 extra base hits, nine doubles, three triples, and five bombs. 6'2, 185 pound junior is committed to Indiana University. <laughs> On deck is Jaden Fowski. Fowski is sophomore, so you've gone junior, junior, sophomore, and the first three hitters in the order. These are experienced young players. One ball, one strike, one out to Malamazian. Right over the top of that pitch from Rogers. Rodgers had Malamazian out on his front foot. Took a little bit of something off. Don't know what a straight change, but it was 
off of his fastball right there. Got him out of his front foot. Comes at him again, Malamazian and rips this one to left field. Ball is down. Gervasi up with it. Malamazian gets his first hit of the tournament. And that shows how strong he is because that ball was up in the zone. But the good hitter he is and the strong hands that he has, he was able to stay on top of that ball and drive it into left field for the first base hit for the Roadrunners. He said that will bring up Jaden Fowski, 6'2", sophomore. Knocking 17 doubles on this season to go along with the triple and three home runs. Driven in a team high 38 runs. Rodgers could not find that corner. Kowski already has committed to Louisville. He started as a freshman last year. Short lead by Malamazian, first looking right into the eyes of Rodgers. For the second straight hitter, for the second time in the first three hitters, Rodgers has gone to 2-0. and oh. Going back to Fowski pitching for just a, a minute, he did pitch yesterday two innings, but only 31 pitches. So if his arm is fine, he's below the 35 pitch count limited, so he would be available for his team today. Jammed, he's so gonna sky it out to left center field. Luke Mudd will cut in front of Jack Gervasi and make the catch for the second out. Cleanup hitter, senior Lucas Smith. I'd like to see Lucas Smith after he puts the bat on the ball, how well he runs. Just an incredible athlete. He is roaming center field for his team. Couple of hits yesterday and two runs scored for Smith. This time Rodgers comes over the top. Ball pops out of the mid of Greenfield. And just like that, Malamazu is gone. As soon as he saw the ball come out of Greenfield's mitt, it had not even hit the ground yet. Malamazian took off for second. He has great baseball instincts as well as very well coached. You get your secondary lead after the pitcher delivers the baseball. You find the ball, you look for it, you see the flight of the ball, the spin of the ball, and once it popped away, he was already had momentum going to second base. Good fundamental base running. One ball, no strikes to Lucas Smith. And again, Rogers working from behind. Pass ball charged to Greenfield on that play that enabled Malamazian to get to second. Pitching Rodgers very carefully, it's 3-0. Lee Milano calls Lucas Smith, quote, the heart of our team. Lucas Smith told you and I, I just want to lead by example. He didn't deny it. He, he yep. knew that he was one of the leaders of this team. Green light on 3-0, absolutely. Rodgers will take four pitches, all balls. He'll head down to first base. Nick Dertina, excellent game yesterday. Two hits for Dertina. RBI. He's also committed to Louisville, so you, you dispose of one Louisville hitter for the fly ball, <laughs> and you got to face another Louisville hitter of that stature. Six players in this Nazareth Academy team with Division I commitments. Chris Rogers, I mean, to go to work now. He needs a first pitch strike somewhere along the way here. Sun almost directly overhead. Long, long look from Rogers to Greenfield. Thirteen is ready. 
Right at the top of the zone. Dertina will take it for a strike. Outfield playing straight away. Average depth, maybe a little bit deeper in right field by Adam Fitzgerald. Ali Milano was telling Cooper Malmazian, I think, to try to relay something to his hitter. In the meantime, Parker Greenfield may have picked up just on that as well and goes out and talks to Chris Rogers. And I guarantee they're talking about, you know, what pitch is what number now in the count so that they cannot get a sign stolen. Rays Lake Central unable to capitalize on runners on the bases in the top half of the first. Two gone here for Nazareth. Nick Dertina working the count. The offensive philosophy for Nazareth Academy, it's always been that way, score one run, an inning. Preferably more, but at least one. That's what you're shooting for to get those seven. Now amazing, short lead at second. Dertina turns on it. Picked up by Hanson, and he will win the race to the bag. Chris Rogers struggled a little bit in the first inning, but he gets out of it, gives up a hit and a walk. Two runners left on base. We'll go to the second in your 3A championship game. Game two of four here today. 3A and 4A champions to be crowned. First up, though, our third place game went nine innings. But Sycamore with a two to one win over Effingham. It came on a wild pitch in the bottom of the ninth inning. Sycamore picks up the third place trophy later on. We will have scheduled start at three o'clock. It will be York taking on New Trier for third place before Edwardsville and Brother Rice. Look to crown a 4A champion. First batter in the top of the second inning for Grays Lake Central's Riley Pollock. Pollock facing Finn O'Mara. Pollock, another one of those Grays Lake hitters. He's hitting 337. What do they have? Eight or nine guys over 300 are batting or we talked about their offensive prowess in the open, and they just do not have an out in their lineup that you can count on. Malamazian slides to his left from behind the bag, makes it look easy. <laughs> One gone to Garrett Gunther. Next batter for Grays Lake Central, the second baseman, number 12, Garrett Gunther. Gunther this season, 31 runs batted in, and a 340 average. Everybody hovering around that same 300 mark, mid 300s. Gunther yesterday had a couple of RBIs. Big gap of left center field as Lucas Smith, the center fielder for the Roadrunners, moves over into right center, thinking that Gunther will take the ball that way, maybe swing just a little bit late. Mira with that three-quarter delivery hides that ball for quite a long time, kind of tucks it behind that right shoulder. Senior headed to DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana next year. 
Baseball plays good baseball, but obviously an academic institution. Pitch to Gunther. Three balls, no strikes. A lot of folks from Grays Lake came down to Joliet today. Scattered about, some in the shade, some in the sun. Now it's three and one. Same can be said for Nazareth Academy. Finn O'Mara gets by 3-0. Pours in a strike. Son of a really good pitcher. Is a guy that won't give in on 3-0. Comes back and pounds his own. Now Mason is going to get another shot at this. He's not going to get to it. Ball scoots through on the turf. Gunther has a second hit of the day for the Rams. And you take a look and you break that down. We talk about a guy that comes back, pounds his own. He did just that, did O'Mara. So he did his job. But sitting on a fastball like he should have was Gunther, who turned it right back around. Almazian went ahead and dove for that ball, but not a chance. That one had eyes up the middle. Cal Hansen, 6'2 sophomore, gets to start at first base today, playing in just his ninth game of the season. 18 at bats, seven hits. Works out to a 389 batting average. Short lead at first. Mira falls behind. You go back to Cal Hansen, only his ninth game. Really nice play to end the last half inning. He stayed down on a ball hit hard by Dertina. Bobbled it for a little bit, didn't panic. Made the play, finished the play. Good swing. High fly ball along the left field line. Jaden Fowski, just in fair territory, will make the catch. Two out to Sam Cooper. Next batter for Grays Lake Central, the shortstop, number three, Sam Cooper. Sam Cooper, one of the seniors on this year's club. A club that has won 33 games out of 40 for head coach Troy Whalen. Whalen picking up his 494th victory in his 20th season. The Rams won 93 games the last three years. Grays Lake Central's path defeated Fenwick 2-1 to one in the super sectional. And then yesterday, a much easier time with the 9-1 to one win. You know, this oh. team started just 2-3 and three with 200 innings returning on the mound. They thought they'd be better when well, they caught fire at the right time. Well, I mentioned this yesterday. The basketball team reached super sectional play, and we have about six players on this Grays Lake Central team were part of the basketball team, so a, a little bit behind in their baseball training, if you will. The start of the season. Gun through the short lead at first. So Amira here at three and is gonna have to battle back once again. Right fielder, Luca Fiore, really shading Cooper to the line. Runners first and second. So Grays Lake Central has not been lacking for base runners. They've had two runners on in each of the first two innings. Well, Troy Whalen told us, expect a big crowd Grays Lake is a baseball loving community and they have turned out here today. A lot of green to the right. We'll have green coming up at three o'clock when York and New Trier meet in the third place game in 4A. Parker Greenfield batting out of the ninth spot, the catcher. Mira pops the glove. Greenfield headed to Buena Vista. One ball, one strike, two outs. Once again, as we've seen in each of the first three half innings. Runners in scoring position. Watch a possible pickoff at second. 
I saw the communication between Almazian and O'Meara. We'll see. Gunther takes his lead at second base. Not on this pitch. Greenfield behind that fastball. Fouled it back. Now O'Meara, pitch away from getting out of it. Grays Lake has seven seniors that have played varsity ball together. You go back to when they're nine and 10 years old for the Grays Lake Coyotes. They've been around a lot of ballparks together for a lot of years. One two pitch. Ooh, look out. It sizzled right past the on deck hitter, Jack Gerbasi. Ben O'Meara taking his time with two runners aboard. There's your pickoff. One six. We talked about defense, it comes in all forms. And that will close out the inning as Gunther picked off second. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Nazareth will look to play off that defensive play and get on the board. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Dave Bernhardt along with my Hall of Fame partner, Mark Lindo. Mark, you saw the the sign. It was actually delayed by a pitch, basically, right? Yeah, it, you know, I, I saw the pitcher go to his cap, that being O'Meara, and Malmazian went back to his shirt, and that tipped me off. No one else on the ballpark must have seen it because the play was executed perfectly, but, you know, it's just a – that's just the baseball person that you and I are and people around the ballpark. You're always looking for what's going on and awareness of what's going on. How about that inside move? That was yeah. an inside move to second base. And I mean, O'Meara was outstanding with it. Yeah, the inside move kind of has gone by the wayside, which was really in vogue a few years ago, but executed right there, a set play that was called and a big play again defensively right there for the Roadrunners who they're pretty good in every facet of the game. <laughs> like I say, they live on defense, but they live on defense, they live on pitching, they run the bases, they hit the baseball authority, a little bit of everything. Looking for a run here in the bottom of the second inning, it'll be David Cox, Landon Tomey, and Finn O'Meara. Leading off for Nazareth Academy, the third baseman, number 20. David Cox headed David to David Northwestern Cox. University, a third baseman for the Road Runners. And he's just a junior, already committed. He's about as smooth a third base as you will possibly find. Now his problem is he has a shortstop next to him in Cooper Malamazian. Or you can see Cox playing it short. And a big curveball falls in. But he has that look of a big third baseman, right? He has yeah. just has that size. 6'4", 205, just a junior. Well, that's good size for a shortstop. We see a lot of big shortstops in the major leagues right now. Like two quality pitches by Rogers right there. That ball went vertically down a good 10 inches straight over the top. The old hammer breaking ball. Rogers in control. He delivers on 0-2. Cox goes down on three pitches. Now bring up Landon Tomey. Told me the freshman second baseman two for two yesterday, and if that last name sounds familiar to you, well, because his dad's an assistant coach. Oh yeah, he's also a first ballot Major League Hall of Famer. Jim Tomey, inducted in 2018, 22 seasons, 600.
12 home runs for Jim Tomey, who is an assistant coach at Nazareth Academy, and he gets to watch his son play in a state championship game. Yeah, he's probably more thrilled with that as he is any other, other of his accolades. Such a selfless person as Jim Tomey, just about as kind as you could be to everyone else. Great ambassador for the game, but a great ambassador just as a human being, and what a thrill it is to watch his son, who had a really good ball game yesterday, both offensively and defensively. Jim Tomey just hanging on that corner of the dugout as he did yesterday. This is outside to land, and it's 2-0. and oh. Jim Tomey, also a special assistant with the Chicago White Sox, and really thanks the White Sox organization for allowing him this time away from the team this year to spend time with Nazareth Academy and his son's high school team. Down the first baseline, a backhand from Hansen. Slick play again from Cal Hansen. I'm going to go back to the, the data you gave us. Hansen only nine games on the year, but he's made two sparkling web gems here already in this baseball game to be impactful from that standpoint. If that one gets down the line, Tommy's got two, maybe three. Ben O'Meara to bat for himself here with two outs in the second. O'Meara hitting in the eighth spot in the order. He faces his counterpart, Chris Rogers. Right handed hitter. Good hack at it. And it will land on the berm among crowd in the shade. Well, that was an easy one. <laughs> Not much running there. <laughs> you know, you see this Nazareth team, it's hard to imagine, you know, but Marist beat them 11 0, just 11 to 1, just pounded them. And they thought that was kind of like a turning point for them that, hey, we better go ahead and regroup. We know we have the talent to repeat, but hard to, hard to look at that team and know they got 10 run. A uh, 10 run defeat against Marist. Well, that was the fourth loss out of eight games. Yeah. And Lee Milano, his third son, playing for him this year. This will be the last year, by the way, that Milano will have a son. His son, Nico, along with Lucas Smith, they were absolutely furious after that loss, 11 to 1. And so Lee had to talk to his son and to Lucas and told him to look at the big picture. But then there was son Dominic, who texted his dad from college and told him to stop drinking the Kool-Aid <laughs> and rip into the team because he thought he was too complacent. So then it was son Anthony told his dad that this could be a short playoff run if this continued. So you've got uh, Nico upset. You have Dom upset. And then Anthony's <laughs> on your back <laughs> getting this team all in order. All in the family there. And Nico, he does a lot of the social media work for his team. Not a regular in this tough lineup, but very much a part of the promotion of Roadrunner Baseball. After the walk, it'll be Chuck Roche, catcher. First pitch running, no throw. He's going on the first move against the left. He hadn't seen the move and just took off as soon as the leg of Rogers was picked up. O'Shea yesterday, a hit and two at bats. Nine hits scattered throughout the order. The semifinal win, three to nothing over Sycamore. O'Shea, a 367 hitter. Pulled off that ball just a bit. Two strikes now, make an adjustment. He has to think middle and opposite. Keep the front side over to baseball. Don't try to do too much with it. Left that up a bit high. Each of the half innings that we played here today found a runner at second base. This time it comes with two outs. O'Shea on the knob, looking to steal third on the lefty. That's a base hit. That will score a run. Nazareth Academy jumps on top. RBI single from Chuck Roche. One to nothing Roadrunners. 
He got a fastball up and out over the plate, and he didn't miss it. He tattooed that baseball down the left field line. Riley Pollock, not any chance to jump up and get that one. Well, Finn O'Meara reached in a walk, stole second. He was looking to steal third. He's able to cruise home on the RBI single from Roche. Lee Milano takes time. He wants to talk to his hitter, Luca Fiore. Fiore, the leadoff batter in the order. Courtesy runner is 13 for Nazareth, 13. Runner for Chuck Roche, the catcher. And as Matt Uphughes. Outfielder, a senior. Nine runs scored, so he's been used in this situation. He's going to draw a throw right away. Mm -hmm. Because they run on Rogers' leg twice. There it is. Let's see what Up Hughes does here on this particular set. Short lead. Well, if Uphughes is going to run, because they've been very aggressive, it's going to be on the leg move because unless we see something different on this leadoff, he had his weight, a one-way lead. His weight was on his left foot back toward first base, where it still is. That's why he was so able to bounce back, as you saw right there. So if he goes, he's not going to try to outrun the catcher. He's going to try to go on the pitcher's first move. It appeared as if he anticipated a throw going over his way. Fury at the plate, grounded out to second, last inning. Rogers varying his timing of his delivery, his leg kick. He's down on the count, 2-0 to Fiore. See that running game that Nazareth utilized already early on this game, right now is concerning Rogers, justifiably so. Upuse was going back as that Leg went up for Rogers. Three balls, no strikes. Again, Malamazian on deck. Fiori, right fielder, a junior. And three and zero. Oh, Rogers will throw over. Make that two and one. I don't know, you think he's running here somewhere in this at bat? I would have thought he would be, but he's, he's not extended his lead whatsoever. A little dancing out there. Fiori pulls back, he'll take it for a ball, three and one. You believe her in the, if you're gonna run three, two here with two outs, you might as well run three, one. I do, I always call that betting on the hitter. Betting on, you're betting on the hitter because he's either gonna hit the ball or ball four. The only bad thing can happen is one swing and miss. And if you're thrown out, you start the next inning with the top of your order here. He is not going. He doesn't need to. Second walk in the inning allowed by Chris Rogers, third of the game. Pushes runners to first and second. And what's happened right now is Chris Rogers, as poised and as great a player as he is, a command he has a mound, the running game has really bothered him. That running after the, the couple steals prior by O'Meara that just bothered him right now with the, even the pinch runner on base. His focus has gone, gone away from attacking hitters to holding on runners. Pace of the game is on the slow side here. Every run mattering matters here in a state championship ball game. We're in the second. Both teams with two hits. Really good timeout by Troy Whalen. 
Settle his team down. Steve Bessie, the home plate umpire, got about halfway out to the mound. So Waylon, a Hall of Fame inductee in 2019. Lee Milano, many prestigious awards, a Hall of Famer. So we got some outstanding coaches going at each other here. Last time Grays Lake Central was here was 2014 under Troy Whalen. Every appearance, 24, every appearance, Troy Whalen's been the head coach because he started the program at Grays Lake Central. Bounced in and good job by Greenfield. Keep it right there, Aaron. Not sure where he took that one. Way that bounced up, that may have gotten him in the throat. What a great play it was. That ball actually went behind the batter, Malmazian, and giving himself up was Parker Greenfield. Mm. Ball one to Malamazian, singled sharply to left field. His last appearance, and that came just one inning ago. Malamazian a chance to boost this one to nothing lead. Good pitch from Rogers. Malamazian had the cut and it disappeared on him. Now he dialed that one up though, didn't he? He was he was in full attack mode. It was Malamazian, but pulling the string, the best pitch maybe of the day right there for mm -hmm. Rogers. Outfield playing deep for Malamazian. Five home runs on the season. Turns away from that inside pitch. Nine doubles, three home run, or three triples, five home runs, five home runs. Leads this Nazareth Academy team. Very short lead at second for Uphuse. Malamazian whiffs again. Now this looks similar to first at bat, and then he all of a sudden roped one to left field. Yeah, games, baseball's a game of adjustments. And great hitters like Cooper Malamazian can do just that. That's why he came, comes in hitting 570. <laughs> just unbelievable his ability to make adjustments at the plate, pitch by pitch. Just got a piece of that one ahead of each one of these pitches. That one just went off the end of the bat. Good battle here between Chris Rogers and Cooper Malamazian. Seems like Nazareth, even though we're on the second inning, total control of mm -hmm. the game, but yet it's only one to nothing. Kudos to Grays Lake Central for, for that being the case. Malamazian requested that timeout. A lot of room down the right field line. Almost bit. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Up Hughes at second, Fiore at first. They'll be off. Nazareth fans below us making some noise. Same with the Grays Lake Central crew. Misses outside, the bases will be loaded for Jaden Fowski. Third walk of the inning. And if you didn't want to face Cooper Malamazian, you sure don't want to look at Jaden Fowski in that batter's box. And Fowski becomes air early on this ballgame. He is the biggest hitter of the game thus far. You mentioned the three base on balls. You have a big bopper up at the plate here. one nothing. you're in really good shape if you're Gray's Lake Central. But Fowski can create big time separation with the ball in the gap right here.
First pitch to Fowski. Last time up, Fowski flew out to the center fielder, Luke Mudd. Mudd playing him straight away. In fact, each the outfielder is straight away for Fowski. And we'll get a little movement down in the Grays Lake Central bullpen. Nothing urgent. Folks just kind of walking down in that area. Lefty on lefty here. Great block, Greenfield. Greenfield saved advancements on the last two batters. Going down to his knees, rounding off his shoulders, putting the catcher's mitt right in the wicket between both legs and saving a would-be run. Rogers going to make a pitch somewhere in this at bat. I'll check to see if he went. He did not, it's two and one. Try to go heat upstairs. Fowski is gonna get a pitch to work with here. Parker Greenfield's asking, why did they appeal the first base umpire rather than the third base umpire? And honestly, that's a legitimate question. Our third base umpire, Bob Zahara, right now positioned about a third of the way from second to third. Base is loaded, 2-1 pitch, and that one will get all the way to the backstop. That will score a run. It's 2 to nothing. Nazareth Academy. Maybe tried to overthrow it just a bit. Parker Greenfield has been outstanding behind the plate, but he didn't have a chance for that one. That one was errant by a good 18, 20 inches. Wild pitch run in to advance. Count is three and one on Fowski, first base open. That will be walk number four of the inning, five for the game. We still have two outs here in the second inning. Lucas Smith, the cleanup hitter, will step into the box. Troy Whalen. Out of the dugout momentarily, he steps back in. So this is Rogers' batter. It's the eighth batter of the inning for Nazareth. If he can get out of here with just two runs allowed, that's a win. There's no doubt. Rogers just can't find it. Rodgers did come in with 26 walks in 42 innings. So he's not immune to the walk. The 2-0, he's walked three in a row. And the more you struggle, the tougher that plate seems to be able to find it for a pitcher. We mentioned before, a plate 17 inches. Sometimes it feels like it's seven inches. Rodgers has thrown 51 pitches. Only 21 have been strikes. Three balls, no strikes. No let up on deck, that's Nick Dertina. Smith, he was gonna take that all the way. It was right on the inside corner. I think Rogers needs this out to stay in the ball game. To yes. Be I think yep. if he wants to continue, he's gotta get this batter right here, Lucas Smith. Not gonna happen. A three to nothing lead. Four straight walks. Two of them have forced in runs. Nazareth, the three to nothing lead. Home plate started to jump a little bit for Chris Rogers. 
Pretty tough outing for the senior who's been stellar for them all year with eight wins against one loss. He faced eight batters this inning and he will exit. He'll exit the mound. Quite sure he will stay in the game and continue to hit. Listed on the lineup card as a pitcher designated hitter today. So the roster tells us the new pitcher is Jacob Wrecker, but I had to double check myself because it says the roster also says he throws right handed and we have a southpaw on the mound, but I'm going to. Just go ahead and assume that this is Wrecker on the hill. A junior, six foot 156. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Given the stature and Redker in the roster is only pitching one game. Yeah. So let's we'll see if we can get a clarification as to who this is. That's not a six footer out there. No, either. that's why I was unsure even saying that. I just went by numerical. Mm -hmm. on the hotline trying to get the info. <laughs> you got the bat phone going. <laughs> well, we missed the PA call on that. But no matter who it is, is in a jam here. Three runs are in, bases loaded, number five hitter, Nick Dertina. Tina Louisville commit. He could bust it open right here for Nazareth Academy. One strike to Dertina. Big time in a ball game. Fastball, 0-2. Steve Bessie very slow with his right arm. Got it, got to always make a double take. See that right arm come up. Need it out here if you're Grays Lake Central. And they get it. One, two, three with the strikeout. But three runs across the plate. Four consecutive walks, five in the inning, only one hit. But Nazareth leaning it three to nothing after two in your 3 8 title game. Pitcher that came in and got those three quick strikes was Colin Cornett, 5'7", 140-pound junior. Boy, and he got a great hitter there, too, in Dirtina. Yes, he did. He came in attack mode, got two strike calls, and then got the strikeout with a blowaway fastball. Leading off the race with Central, the catcher, number 28, Parker Green. Now it's time for... Rays Lake Central are trying to make a dent on this scoreboard. Top of the third inning, Parker Greenfield to lead things off, hitting out of the ninth spot. A long, long bottom of the second inning. Ends up scoring three for Nazareth Academy.
Greenfield was at the plate when Gunther was picked off second. O'Meara comes right out and gets two quick strikes. We talk about momentum. It's yes. definitely on the Nazareth side, but a quick inning here would really turn that up. Yeah, you're Nazareth right now. You want to shut down inning after put three up on the board, and you would have full command of this baseball game. Obviously, for Grays Lake, they feel like they need to scratch next. O'Meara just missed. Dropped down just a little bit on that one. Just missed the outer edge. It's interesting looking out at second base. Landon Tomey playing off the dirt. Dirt, if you will, here. And that time you'll get him looking. Third strike out of the game for O'Meara. The top of the order and Jack Gerbasi, he led off this game being hit by a pitch. He stole second, got himself to third on an infield hit. That was cut down, trying to score in the back end of a double steal. Gerbasi goes after the first pitch. He'll play baseball at Michigan State. We asked him why he made that choice. He said, just loved the campus and fell in love with the coaches. You know what? He'll be okay after his baseball career because he's an engineering major. Mm -hmm. That was one of the reasons why he's headed there as well. Straight back to the screen again. Fine, well-spoken young man. We had a chance to visit with him. Great weather here today for your final day of the Illinois high school sports season. I always get a the melancholy feeling, right, of the mm -hmm. sports season over, but we will wrap it up tonight. The 4A championship game with Edwardsville taking on Brother Rice. And then Monday there'll be hundreds of passing leagues, <laughs> basketball games, baseball summer league, soccer, you name it, in full swing. Two quick strikeouts here for O'Meara. That time is Gerbasi. Turns it over to Luke Mudd. Mudd with one of the two hits. And a ball up the middle. It was backhanded by Tomey. Didn't have time to get Mudd going down the line. Grays Lake Central Rams were in camo, camo uniforms yesterday. I think you find these uniforms much more announcer friendly, don't you, Dave Bernard? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, they list two different numbers on the roster. And so talking to head coach Troy Whalen earlier in the week, I said, okay, you know, what's with the numbers? He said, okay, so well, we're going to wear our cream color ones on Saturday. We'll wear our green ones on Friday. And I knew there was a green jersey that was camouflage. <laughs> I was hoping there was another green jersey that the Rams used. Two and one on Luke Mudd. He had a stolen base. That's when Grays Lake Central got on and started moving all over the bases. Steve Bessie, the very efficient strike call. Just a point out to the side. Mira just missed. I never really thought about what my strike call would be. Do you have one in mind? Would you be a uh, very demonstrative? I'd be very verbal with my strike okay. call. I would. Okay. 3 2 pitch. That was a good job by Mud. That was a great pitch by O'Meara. It was. One of my favorite umpires of all time is a guy named Dick Davenport, which most of our viewers don't know who he is, but. He would say, strike, baby, strike, baby. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. He had fun doing the game. That misses. It's a two-out walk that will send Mud down to first base. Next 
bring up Adam Fitzgerald. He's part of a double play, struck out. And then on the steal of second by Luke Mudd, it was cut off by the shortstop, Coop Malamese, and he fired home to Roche at the plate, and they cut down Gerbasi, and that was closest that Grays Lake Central's been able to score here today. Rams have had two outs on the bases today. One we just described, the other was a pickoff at second base. Short lead at first for Mudd. O'Meara does such an effective job of changing speeds. That ball got in on Fitzgerald in a hurry. Just disrupting the timing, the lockdown timing of the opposing batter, he does such a great job of that, moving the ball around and changing speeds. Gressniffs has likely been taken away here from Grays Lake Central, trailing by three. And normally if you're down two, you're still okay. You study the game plan, but three, you're trying to play for a little bit more of a bigger inning. Again, playing Fitzgerald, hit the ball to the right side. Right on his fist, how about that? You drop down a little bit, right hand here and right on your knuckles. And he was able to foul that off, live for another pitch. Pitch Fitzgerald, he's gonna to go to the right side, he's gonna to go to the right fielder. Luca Fiore right there for the one-handed grab, and that closes out the top of the third inning. Nothing across for the Rams, they do leave a runner on. We'll head to the bottom of the third, and a three-run lead for Nazareth. not the only game in town here today. In fact, we're not the only game here at Dooley Health and Care Field. Yeah, we have baseball going on, state championship game going on here, but beyond the left center field wall, there is a game being played there. That is the Miracle Field of Joliet. And that is an activity every Saturday here in Joliet. It's for special needs folks of all ages. You get a chance to come out and play on a field that is designed specifically for the safety, the efficiency, the fun of the participants. So everybody gets to play ball here, plus all the volunteers that do their best to help you out. Yeah, it's a spongy type field, as you mentioned, for no injuries. So it's a safe factor. There's volunteers that probably are rewarding to the players, the, the participants that need that help. The volunteers probably get the biggest reward of the day by being out there. What a special place it is here in downtown Joliet, the Miracle Field. Those volunteers, they come back week after week and they know the players. And they know the players requests <laughs> certain folks to help them get around the bases, do the hitting. Truly, everybody wins in many, many ways. David Cox will bat again to lead off the third inning as the Roadrunners Batted around in the second. Cox, who struck out the last time, rips this one to left field off of Cornette. And all of a sudden, the Roadrunners looking to make something else happen here. Cornette came out, put in, put out the fire with a strikeout in the last inning to close the door. He can't punch you out. I'll tell you what, the young man has 59 strikeouts in his uh, excuse me, his 37 innings of pitch. So that's a really high ratio as we have a pinch runner 
coming in right now for David Cox. For Nazareth Academy, pinch runner will be Brennan Wagner. So Wagner to run for Cox, Landon Tomey at the plate. Landon Tomey can handle the bat. We'll see if he's called on to bunt. Cam Martin, by the way, now catching for Green Bay Central. Cam Martin. The new catcher for the Rams is Cam Marson. Takes the place of Greenfield. Parker Greenfield. Get a breather here. Colin Cornett on the mound. Delivers to Landon Tomey. He's going to go opposite field. Right there. Make the catch is Gerbasi. So after a two for two day yesterday, Landon Tomey, the freshman, 0 for two today. Yeah, but his first time up, hit the ball hard down the first baseline. And that one he just missed, hitting the line drive to left field. And go back to Cam Marson now catching Parker Greenfield. Took a physical beating there for a couple mm. innings, blocking balls. So hope that young man is okay. Pretty good move to first there. Yeah, I believe he caught that one up in the yeah. throat, the chin area, ball that bounced in. Brennan Wagner, the lead at first for the Roadrunners. At the plate, it's Finn O'Mara. O'Mara. Walk stole second score the first run of this game. Cornet just stands 5-7. We have seen all different heights of pitchers out here this weekend. Right side, diving stop. No play for Gunther. That'll be an infield hit for O'Mara. What a great effort by Gunther. Had to range far to his left glove side. He was able to knock that ball down, but Gunther too quick down the first baseline. No play at first. Wagner will move to second. Number nine hitter in the order, Chuck Roche. He singled in a run, singled in the first run of this game. Pulls back in a bunt, we'll take it for a strike. Interesting for the Rams. First baseman Hanson and third baseman Pollock both were staying back on that square round. Bunt shown. He's gonna slash here it looks like. Corners are not biting, and there you go, coach. Third baseman Riley Pollock turned at 45 degrees, facing that runner at second. That runner is Brennan Wagner. He's almost 90 degrees now. Yeah, two strikes. I don't think he needs to do that right now. See if he makes that adjustment. He does. Uh, yeah, a little no, bit. Yeah. No, he's actually facing squarely at the runner, Wagner at second. Obviously, the eyes at home plate. Roche is able to hold up. And what's interesting about him looking at the runner is if he's not playing in for the bunt, he's already in position to cover third base on a would be steal. So. Now they'll shift a little bit in the infield. They'll hold the runner on with Cooper at short. And that will send Roche back to the bench, called strike. Second strikeout for Cornet. Yeah, Cornet's strikeout to innings pitched. Pretty solid. Now he's not going to blow the ball by you with 92, 94 miles. No, he won't. But really hard breaking ball there. Good 12 6 rotation straight down vertically. Luca Fiori to come to the plate for the third time in three innings. The leadoff hitter for Nazareth Academy. Outfield plays him straight away. 
A ground out, a walk, and a run scored. He'll take strike two. Three to nothing. Nazareth looking for more. Winners of the 2022 state championship in 3A. In the bottom of the third inning. Just missed. There's never really been so far any pace or rhythm to this game. A lot of pitches thrown, especially by the Grays Lake staff. Couldn't get it to come down. Count goes to three and two with two outs. Ball in the gap could score two. Malamazian waits on deck. Ball's left up, the bases will be loaded for Malamazian. First walk for Cornet. Seventh walk of the game allowed by Grays Lake Central pitching. That's a lot in two and two thirds innings. And you magnify a state championship game by it and you're asking for trouble. Malamazian today, a single and a walk. Remember, two runs last inning for Nazareth. Came on bases loaded walks. Malamazian to the left side. Cooper, a little shovel to second base. Now close out the inning. A lot of folks on the bases. Three left on. Nobody scores. We'll go to the top of the fourth. Grace Lake Central needs to scratch here. Watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships right here on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. We can let you know that today's game is available to download. Just click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Well, Finn O'Mara has been cruising along. He'll have to face four, five, and six in the Grays Lake Central order. Chris Rogers, Riley Pollock, and then Garrett Gunther. Three run second inning for Nazareth Academy. Two scoring on bases, loaded walks. Rogers will look to get things going. Rogers started the game on the mound, just did not have it today, so he assumes the designated hitter position. That's how he's listed on the lineup card, so he is Actually batting for Colin Cornett, the pitcher. Rogers goes after the first one, a couple of hops. Out to Malamazian, it's short, the cross it goes, one gun. How about that second hop to Malamazian? Came up, it looked like, okay, it's gonna eat him up. He had the glove straight down like a great shortstop would. And then the ball came up, he came up right with it. Very receptive hands, just, he just glides to the baseball. What a comforting feeling for a pitcher on this Nazareth Academy staff when they throw a ground ball. Riley Pollock grounded out to Malamazian at short his first time up. He stands there with one out. O'Mara 
brings right down the middle. See, sometimes easier said than done. Well, Mira keeps pounding the zone. They'll be in good shape, but I'll tell you why. Because their defense is so rock solid. If he doesn't beat himself, he'll get to be the winning pitcher in the state championship. Miss that one just a bit outside. He's been ahead on the count most of the day. He's been active on the bases as well. Been on base a couple of times. Pollock needs to find a hole out here. That one gets away from O'Mara. Three and one to Pollock. Way back in the first inning. I say way back even though we're in the fourth. Because yes. that was about an hour and 20 minutes ago if that. I forget. I don't know what time we started this game actually now they look at it. Started late. A little bit late. But way back in the first inning. Grays Lake Central had the first two runners reach base. In that top of the first. There's a one out walk to Pollock. Third walk by O'Mara. We've had 10 walks today in this game. Garrett Gunther in his single to center field. He was eventually picked off at second base, however. And that stopped a Rams threat. Like one of Gunther's comments, he says, you know, I admit, I just have warning track power. <laughs> <laughs> Put another plate on the weight rack and you'll be able to get it over to your, get it out of the yard. <laughs> <laughs> he has no home run, seven doubles, two triples. <laughs> He's looking to move Pollock around. O'Shea, sophomore catcher, nice job sliding over and keeping it in front of him. Yes, when we tell you this guy's a junior, this guy's a sophomore, we're not making it up. <laughs> yeah, it's a young championship caliber team. Looking to repeat, following Joliet Catholic, repeating last week. Throw away at first base, looking to pick off Pollock. That was not even a, a serious pickoff attempt. The throwing error by O'Mara will send Riley Pollock to second. Well, here with one out, Grays Lake Central just wants one run. Give me one run. And here, this conversation has nothing to do with the pitch. It has nothing to do with... The hitter at the plate that has everything to do is know the situation. Yeah, focus. You did not need to make a good move there. A step off would have worked. That's Mike Bowden, who works with the pitchers. Mike Bowden from Wabonsee Valley, drafted by the Boston Red Sox out of high school and pitched in the big leagues for the Red Sox and for the Chicago Cubs. So Lee Milano comes out quite often to make a change or if there's something defensive to talk about, but Bowden comes out to talk to the pitchers in that situation. Nice to have a big league pitcher is to get in your head as well to help you when you're struggling through something mentally. You have two former major yep. leaguers on your coaching staff. Jim Tomey and Michael Bowden. And how about Michael Bowden actually pitched to Jim Tomey? <laughs> That's just incredible. Now they're in the same dugout coaching. In fact, it was Bowden's debut in the big leagues. Yep. He faced Tommy. You know, and that's the fascinating thing, too, and another timeout called. Fascinating thing, too, is hearing those two talk with each other on Thursday night, um, recalling every almost every yes. pitch everybody can throw and what they threw and the thinking. And you can see why, not only just athletically, but certain people just reach certain levels. O'Meara with the fourth walk, and that's going to be it for him. Yep. At least Lee Milano's making the trip this time out. Boy, base on balls have been a bugaboo today. No doubt about that. The strike zone has jumped on pitchers on both sides. Seven strikeouts by Grays Lake Central pitchers. Four here now. 
for Nazareth Academy pitchers, and the change will be made. Sebastian Wagner will check in. I'll check that. Still not sure who they're giving the ball to. Yeah. There's a pile up at the pitcher's mound. Not in a great angle to always get those defensive substitutions. Looks like David Cox double check me as 27. You are correct, sir. 6'4, 205, a junior. Came, comes in from third base. We've talked about his ability to throw leather there. His ninth game on the hill. 3 0 record for David Cox. 26 innings pitched. Check this out, 43 strikeouts in 26 innings. Four, uh, just amazing number right there. And Cox comes in with two runners on base, and his job is get the ball over home plate. Easier said than done sometime. A little infield practice, some new infielders out there as well. Nick Tertina is still at first base. Sebastian Wagner goes to third. That will replace David Cox. You have the tying run at the plate. It, it, it just doesn't feel that way. No. Feels like Nazareth have been in full control of this game. You know why? Because they have been. But yet they've not been able to they've not been able to create that separation of the dominance that they've had runners on base. It's unbelievable that right now Grays Lake definitely in this baseball game, especially if they scratch one here, as you talked about when they came to bat. Nazareth Academy has left eight runners on base through three innings. Base load each of the last two innings. Cox pumps a strike in the first pitch. Look the second, Cox. Ooh, that's a good cut from yet another sophomore in Cal Hansen. Cox, first two pitches. Here I am, here I am. Catch me if you can. We've, we saw his holes from third base about three or four lasers across the <laughs> diamond yesterday. Stands tall on that mound. Pitching not his first position. Guarantee you that. But, boy, he's, he's getting up there at 89, 91 miles an hour. Will Tepper will not stay fair. Third place game in 4A follows this one. And that game will start late. That was scheduled for 3 o'clock. And that will match York and New Trier. And after that, it will be a 4A championship game with Brother Rice and Edwardsville. Yeah, we started at 9 o'clock this morning. And neither of our two games here in 3A have had much pace to them. We went nine innings in that third place game. Melamazian goes up and gets it and doubles the runner off first. Oh my goodness. Ring it up, a double play. He caught that at the apex of his jump and just snared it, brought it back down. A big time play. And then how about his mental toughness? He looked at second base, there was not a play there. So then he said, okay, I'll go back to first. Just an amazing defensive play. We've been singing the praise of Nazareth's defense. There it was once again. Lee Milano says he's the best shortstop in the state. You got a glimpse of it right there. So, Rays Lake Central denied halfway home in your 3A championship and the Roadrunners lead it three to nothing. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking, or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, 
Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Dave Bernhardt along with Mark Lindo. Mark, I want to bring you back to before this game started. We had about 30 seconds or so. You want to talk about the defense for Nazareth Academy. Yeah, it's been so good all weekend, all season. They can just flat out throw leather. Their left side isn't good. It's tremendous. Their middle infield, Toma used to freshman, but he's good. Center field can't beat that. The play they get from Lucas Smith, very fine catcher they have. And in Roche, and they're just solid up and down defensively. They not only make the routine plays, they make the sparkling, sensational plays. Cole Cornett will work into the fourth inning. First battery faces will be Jaden Fowski, a fly out. Fowski walked with the bases lowered to force in a run. Get the feeling Fowski is about to unload on one here soon. Good spot by Cornett, didn't get it. One and one. What's amazing in this tournament is how many 6'2", 195 guys we've described. There's some big bodies like that. There's Fowski with the rip to left center. This is going to get all the way to the wall. Fowski headed to second. He's being waved. Here he comes, the relay. And that will be a triple for Jaden Fowski. Fowski slipped the gap between Gerbasi and Mudd, and then it was off to the races. Lee Milano the whole way had him coming down. As he rounded second, he was already saying, get down to third, get down to third. But you get an incredible double play to end the top of the fourth and then lead off with one of the most exciting plays in baseball, a triple, and the Roadrunners got some beep beep in him. You can see why Lee Milano, as head coach, calls Jaden Fowski maybe the best pure hitter He's ever coached. Lucas Smith, the infield is in. Down by three, they can't get down by much more here. They're gonna choke off this run. Lucas Smith, the cleanup hitter. Walk and a single. He was looking for more than a single on that cut. <laughs> Good cut. He wants some elevation here, infield in. Lucas Smith will be looking for a base hit, but he'd be happy just to get the ball out of the infield and drive in the run. Good count here for Smith to work with, the two and one. He'll play at UIC, so another one of those, what, six or seven <laughs> Division I ball players that you mentioned earlier in the ball game. This one is fouled away, all the way out of Dooley Health and Care Field. Have we had a moment here this weekend where it's not been sunny? Yeah, it's been all, both weekends, right? Yeah. Last weekend in Peoria. Count three and two, really don't want to go first and third here. Nick Dertina waits. And it will be first and third. Second walk by Cornett. So in order here in this lineup, you start with, let's say number two, Malamazian, committed to Indiana. Fowski committed to Louisville. Smith committed to UIC. Dertina committed to Louisville. David Cox is next. He's committed to Northwestern. Do you want the ball? <laughs> <laughs> That is a murderer's row, too, if you will. Mm -hmm. 
Here is Dirtino. He's grounded out and struck out. Well, if Grays Lake doesn't come back and win the state championship, I think they'll lament two things. One, that double play in the top of the fourth inning, and two, too many base on balls allowed mm -hmm. here in this state championship game. Eight walks. And we've not completed four at-bats. Picked off at first. They'll just let him go. No play for Hanson at first base. It was a first move from Smith. I think Hanson wanted to throw the ball across the diamond to Sam Cooper, but uh-uh. It was already in full stride, Lucas Smith, so there wasn't a chance to get him. That was a tough angle, of course, yes. for Cooper to come from. Now the infield back in tight. Nobody out here as Nazareth Academy leaving eight runners on base through the first three innings. They don't want to do anything like that here in the fourth. Dirtina down the line and fair. One run scores easily. The second following, Fowski Smith. A two run double from Nick Dirtina, five to nothing. He inside out that baseball and just drove it past Riley Pollock, the third baseman. Not a chance as he got down, he got that ball down the third baseline. And Nazareth, who's been pressuring the entire ball game, hits a deuce right here thus far and still alive as they've created this separation that could lead possibly to a back-to-back -back state championship. Five to nothing, runner at second for Cox. It was Chris Rogers that started for Grays Lake Central, sparkling statistics coming in, and sometimes just not your day. Rogers with an ERA of under two, and there's a buck. Pressure being put on. The buck advances the runner to third. So Dirtina doubles, goes to there in the buck. And now it's time to settle everybody down. It was, it was interesting watching Lee Milano on that double by Dirtina. The ball sizzled by right in front of him and Lee in his haste to start waving runners kind of slipped and fell. <laughs> I think everybody got the idea that they were headed home on that ball by Dertina. Yeah, he lost his balance, but he regained enough to get to get his two runners home. <laughs> you, know, you talked about that winning streak to start the season, 18, the end of one season, 17, the other season, getting this one, 35-game winning streak. First loss was to Bennett Academy. Then they lost to Kenwood, Joliet Catholic, the 2A state champions, Niles Notre Dame, Chicago Maris. We talked about 11-1 loss. They lost to St. Ignatius College Prep. But you watch this team and you see their athleticism and their baseball skills, and it's hard to – they can be put up against any team, any level yes. in the state of Illinois. Obviously, it's a 3A, but I think they're one of the top teams in the nation, to be honest with you, from a talent standpoint. Cox at the plate. Alan Cornett misses. A little bit of action in the Rays Lake Central bullpen. Cox waits. And does a little tippy toe jump out of the way. You can see a little body language now in the Rams from Grays Lake Central. Kind of sagging just a bit. Cox will look at a strike. Zach Atatucci warming up down the pin for Troy Whalen's team. Slow curveball. Cox, who started the game at third base, came out in relief last half inning. Three runs in the second, two here in the fourth with nobody out and a runner at third for Nazareth Academy. Did he go? He did. Cox didn't believe it. He's going to go back to the dugouts first out of the inning. 
Right hand came up. They rang him up on a appeal to first base. Down there to Justin Bowling. It's the first out. Landon Tomey 0 for 2 today after a 2 for 2 day yesterday for the freshman. His knees buckled just a bit there. You know, your prior knowledge, I'm going to go back to Jim Tomey. I just saw him in the corner of the dugout again. Just off the top of your head, he, he was never on a World Series champion, was he? Or you was know, he I, was, Cleveland? I was trying to think of that earlier. I don't know that he was. This could be his first. First ring, yeah. Yeah. Took him a, to get back to high school to get that. It would be pretty amazing in a Hall of Fame career. He's eyeballing his son right there in the batter's box. Line drive right <laughs> at the second baseman, Gunther. You don't hit him much harder than that. i tell you what, Landon Tomey had a good offensive day yesterday. He barreled that ball, boom, right at the second baseman. He barreled the ball to the outfield. He barreled the ball down the first baseline. What's he got to show for it? Just a couple knuckles of congratulations coming to the dugout. <laughs> baseball's a funny game, isn't it? It really yeah. is. We know it all the time. Three balls on a button, and you got nothing. Finn O'Mara in at the plate. He was removed from his pitching duties. Now he is doing the hitting, and he is actually doing the hitting for Sebastian Wagner, who came into the game defensively when O'Mara left. Does Cornet get out of this with minimal damage? If you're Nazareth, you got one more run to get. Cornet really has a really solid breaking ball, and he bears it right in on the hands of right handed hitters. Checking the count. Two balls and a strike for O'Meara. It's going to be a tough play and a hole it short for Cooper. Backhand throw. Uh -uh, it's an RBI infield single for O'Meara. And the lead grows to six to nothing. Sam Cooper went through the hole. He backhanded that baseball. A really strong throw. So a good play overall by their fine fielding shortstop. But busting it down the line was Finn O'Meara who just beat that throw. The number nine in the order, this is the third time through the order here for Nazareth in the fourth innings we've played. Lifted to center, Luke Mudd parked under it. And that will close it out. Three run inning in the second, three run inning in the fourth. Six nothing lead for Nazareth Academy as we go to the fifth. And today's games are sponsored by OSF on call urgent care. Do you care for money? Oh, you gotta talk about the The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool on the field where will your greatness take you to better grades to more friends yeah! be great <laughs> today's game is also available for all subscribers via the nfhs network live mobile app for apple and android devices download the app from the apple app store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. And high school sports fans, never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live game coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games. One destination, nfhsnetwork.com. We are high school. 
Rays Lake Central going to make something happen here. And they will look to do it here with Sam Cooper to lead things off. They'll be followed by Cam Marson, we would suspect. He came in defensively for Parker Greenfield. Cooper today with the walk. O'Meara still on the hill. Cooper rips this one down the left field line. Fowski over quickly. Cooper, though, is going to head into second base. Stand up double to start things here in the fifth for the Rams from Grays Lake Central. Nice job getting his hands out top of that baseball, sitting on a fastball. He got it, broke it down the left field line. The Rams need something of any substance this inning. They think usually I say they just need one. They need two or three this inning, to be honest with you. And that's a pretty good start with a man on second and no one out. We will get a pinch hitter for the number nine spot in the order. Ralph DeLeon to do the hitting. Five six senior. A pinch hitter, number nine, Ralph DeLeon. DeLeon. Yesterday was a designated hitter, 0 for 1 officially. <laughs> 243 batter coming into the tournament. Balls that one straight back. Slashing at the baseball, though, I like his aggressiveness. Fastball by O'Meara misses outside. Cooper the, will take the lead at second. And the answer to your query from about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> DeLeon will stay foul. Jim Tomey did not win a World Series, okay. played in a couple of World Series. So obviously a disappointment for a first ballot Hall of Famer, but that's going to be some gratification if the score holds up here today. Trying to ride the coattails of his son ah, <laughs> to a go. ring. How about that? Well, okay, so Lee Milano <laughs> said, you know, that Landon Tomey has to establish his own identity. If Nazareth hangs on, uh, yeah, the Tomey, <laughs> That's awesome. the Tomey identity will change. <laughs> Only one champion in that household, huh? <laughs> De Leon looking to stay alive here. Is able to fight it off, fist it off. Oh. Went into a crowd of people down there. And there was a catch, by the way, off yeah, that line I, drive. You mentioned it yesterday, unlike Major League Parks, the netting does not extend all the way down over the seating area. It extends to the dugouts. Have to be alert. Dave Cox, a strong physical presence on the bump. I think I said Finn O'Meara earlier, but obviously Cox came on in relief. He got the one battery face, and he got two outs. That was a leaping grab by Cooper Malamazian. At short, doubled off the runner at first, and that ended the Grace Lake Central threat in the fourth. De Leon, the pinch hitter, has taken this count to three and two. Now that play by Malamazian not only was the top one of this game so far, Probably the best play we've seen in this tournament. We've seen some good yes. ones, but yes, that one was spectacular. 3-2 pitch. De Leon, the chopper to first. It will be a 3-1 put out. Go from Dertina to Cox, but that will advance Cooper to third. You know, it's so fundamental, the pitcher covering first. And it should be second nature. But we've seen so many players that pitching is not their primary position. Like right there, I give kudos to Cox for thinking, you know, he, he's used to watching a play take place. If he's not at it, then he has to become involved in it. So really good play by Cox and all pitchers that play other positions that have to have the presence of mind to do that. Back to the top of the order and Gerbasi for Grays Lake Central. Gervasi came into this tournament with a 409 average. He 
Yesterday, one for two. Today, 0 for 1. So that's 1 for 3. He may be able to hang on to that 400 average. A hit here. It would certainly pretty much lock him in on that for the season. May not get a chance at this at bat. It's 3 and 0. One thing about Grays Lake Central, Troy Whalen, their head coach, says they just find a way to win. They've got to find a way to come back here first, and a four pitch walk will help that along. Good plate discipline, not on the 3 0 count, but to get ahead of the count, the first two pitches, he was not in attack mode. They're going to work Cox for everything they can right now because they need runners. When you look back at that play that Malamazian made on Cal Hansen, what if that had gotten over his head? That ball had some giddy up on it. That thing could have gone away and scored some runs, and all of a sudden we'd have a much tighter ball game. No doubt about that. It would have rolled to the wall. Luke Mudd with runners first and third. Don't expect to see the Rams take many chances here. Mudd behind that fastball from Cox. Mudd can't get much closer to home plate. His two feet both on the white striped batter's box and painted on this artificial turf. He's basically hanging over home plate. Decent sized lead over at first base by Gerbasi. See if you're hitting right there and you're on top of home plate, you really got to look for the ball away and hit it that way. Because a pitcher doesn't want to come in with you and get a hit batsman. So they're going to pitch you away. You got to go ahead and hit the ball the other way. Definitely pitching mud away. Mud goes down swinging. That was just an overpowering fastball up above the hands. And yeah, that was some definite heat. Two gone to Adam Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald with a strikeout and a flyout today. Left fielder Fowski playing Fitzgerald Philly shallow. Now he'll back up a bit. A piece of it. That's his best breaking ball, I think, of the entire day. He's gone primarily fastball. He threw a hard breaker right there. Couldn't pull the trigger on that one. No balls, two strikes to Fitzgerald. Lee Milano, I saw his pitch call. He wants it away, down and away. There it is, line drive. Falls in front of Lucas Smith. Rays Lake Central on the board, the RBI single. Coming with two outs by Adam Fitzgerald. Really good piece of hitting, and that was a mistake in the zone by Dave Cox because it was supposed to be a way he caught too much of home plate. And when you catch too much of home plate on an 0-2 pitch, that is a mistake. Great hitters hit, hit mistakes. Fitzgerald did just that to get the Rams on the board. They're trying to move the line here. Well, Sam Cooper comes in to score. He led this inning off with a double, 6-1 now. Chris Rogers will try to drive home another. Normally you'd say one at a time, but at the stage of the game, fifth inning, you're looking at two at a time. David Cox came on in relief last inning. Finn O'Meara at the start today. Cox has kind of been hit or miss here in the last few batters. Struggle with the control. Got on top of Fitzgerald 0-2. Now down 2-0. Here to Rodgers. Going to pick off behind a runner, and Victor Tina playing behind the runner didn't quite get the memo. <laughs> He's going to cover first base. Well, 
Well, with today's tech to technology, I think it was a bad sell. <laughs> That's why he didn't get <laughs> Internet wasn't working full speed. Three balls, no strikes. Three and one. Game two of four here today. 3A championship right here in front of you on a 6-1 to lead. For Nazareth Academy, Roadrunners winners last season for the 3A title. Three and two, runners will be off. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Big swing coming up here for Rodgers. They can go. Troy Whalen reminding his runners, watch the leg move, make him go. Big pitch on both sides. That's why both sidelines are up. There you go. Dave Cox might be better, sir, having his full focus on retiring this batter. He knows the runner's going. <laughs> Fouled back, and that scatters some people in the dugout that hit the netting right next to the Grays Lake Central dugout. We'll do it again on three and two. The pitch, swing and a miss, Cox gets him. Second strike out of the inning. Rays Lake Central gets a run, they strand two. Through four and a half, it's a 6-1 lead for the defending champs. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> Back in Joliet, where the pattern holds, Nazareth Academy will not score here in the odd innings. They've gotten three on the board in each of the second and fourth innings. Luca Fiore would like to prove you wrong by getting on base to start this inning for the Roadrunners. Indeed, he would like, Nazareth would like to get that run back they gave up in the top half of this inning. Top of the order for the Roadrunners, Fiore, Malamazian, and Fowski. Greenfield back behind the plate for Grays Lake Central. And we mentioned Nazareth, their ability, even though they do have six losses on the board. And we asked Lee Milano about that. He said, well, we've had some injuries. We had three hamstrings, <laughs> one ankle, and one UCLA, UCL. So they've had to battle some of those injuries, and they've battled through it to get to what they had a vision of since last June, quite honestly, is being back here. This will be the 28th plate appearance by a roadrunner today. Right up through the middle, the back can behind the back would not work for Cornet, and it's a leadoff single for Luca Fiore. Third time he's been on base today in four plate appearances. We'll get a pinch runner for Fiore. It'll be Matthew Montefusco. 6-4 senior for the Roadrunners. At the plate, it's Malamazian.
Sharp lead for Matafusco over at first. Amazing with the single that came in the first inning. He was stranded at second. Big, slow curveball falls in. I don't think it's a running situation for Montefusco. I think right now he's going to just bet right now on Malamazian finding a gap out there. Parker Greenfield back in behind the plate. Absolutely buries that ball right there at home plate. <laughs> so he got. He got nailed a couple times first time up. First uh, inning catching. Gets a little respite to get taken care of and then one, he catches one once again. You know, you compare, a lot of folks compare like a catcher to a goalie in hockey. You know, you just can't let anything get by and that certainly is true. But hockey goalies, when they catch the puck, they don't have to worry about making sure it looks like a strike or going out and right. talking to your uh, right winger and then say, okay, this is what you need to do, your defenseman. To third, and it stays fair. Pollock on the run. Nice play from Riley Pollock for the first out of the inning. That will advance Montefusco to second. Steve Milano telling his pinch runner, pointing every out, he's saying, check your outfield. Point to the shortstop third base will make the ball go through this side. I tell you what, you never stop coaching. And even though you know your players know those rules, you've got to remind them of that because there's something that I talk about in athletics because I've seen it way too much in my life coaching is game slippage. And that means you know what you're supposed what the athlete knows he's supposed to do, but in a game situation you sometimes forget. That's why coaches have to constantly remind and teach, remind and teach. Jaden Fowski tripled and eventually scored his last plate appearance. Just one inning ago. This ball game officially over two hours here in the bottom of the fifth inning. 13 walks and a hit batter will do that to yes. you. 13 combined walks, eight of them on the Grays Lake Central side. And you have two outstanding baseball teams. But let's report as it is we would expect. We would never expect to see 13 base no. on balls today. And that's a compliment to both these teams. You would never have thought that coming in. We had Finn O'Meara along with the starting pitcher for Grays Lake Central, Chris Rogers. ERAs both under two. You don't get those ERAs with putting people on base. In fact, you know, you go back to, to Chris Rogers. What a tough time for him today obviously and this was after Rogers retired the last 13 batters he faced against Fenwick in the super sectional does this have enough to get through knocked down nicely by Gunther that will save a run the infield single from Fowski runners first and third is advancing to third is Montefusco a yeah, really nice effort by Gunther ranging up the middle knocked that ball down that's the second ball he's knocked down. Kevin in the infield today. One to his left, one to his right to save a run at least for now. Great effort just laying out for the baseball. One out. Lucas Smith, the cleanup hitter. Smith walked and scored last inning. Again, Greenfield has to go to work behind the plate. Lucas Smith, we mentioned his last at bat. He's going to UIC. How great a field and setting is that UIC <laughs> field? Unbelievable. The skyline in the background. Yep. Just a beautiful place for baseball. Smith to third. Pollock gloves. He's going to go to second. Relay to first. They'll turn it. 543. And a runner at third did not get a chance to break for the plate. Excellent inning from Riley Pollock at third base. That will end the Nazareth Academy threat. We'll head to the sixth. It's a five-run difference in your 3A championship.
Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. And you are watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. Well, I contacted the official score of the IHSA State Tournament, Rich Piacek, our good friend, and asked him, how many pitches so far in this game? And his answer was, lots. <laughs> <laughs> With those base on balls you mentioned. And I know we have this discussion every year, Dave Bernhard, and we haven't had it yet this year. You start counting outs now? I know we all, <laughs> And every year I say, yes, I do. Nazareth needs six for a championship. And I always say no. <laughs> no I know you do. <laughs> Riley Pollock to lead it off for the Rams. 33 wins on the season. Pollock, an excellent defensive inning, last inning. Pollock today is 0 for 1. Grounded out and walked. Cox coming on in relief. This will be his third inning of relief of Finn O'Meara. Right through the box. Cox had to get out of the way of that one. Lead off single from Pollock. Pollock just turned that ball right around. He hit that ball right in front of the hitting zone and just laced it back up the middle to get his team started. Fifth hit of the day for Grays Lake Central takes us to Garrett Gunther. He has one of those hits. Been on base twice. Straight back into the screen. Well, running a bit behind schedule, this game over two hours. You're also the first game today, the third place game, went nine innings. That was before Sycamore defeated Effingham two to one. Bounces away from Roche. The wild pitch will send Pollock to second. A run or two here would make things interesting. Got a sneaky suspicion we still might see Jaden Fowski back in this game after pitching 31 pitches yesterday. I'm sure they don't want him to pitch, but I'm sure he'd want the ball. He is eligible to pitch here today. We've got Cooper Malamazian also who can come in and close for Nazareth Academy. Count one and two now to Gunther. And I want to make a clarification on the count the outs. On the defensive side, I do not count the outs. Okay. But on the offensive side, I'm very aware of how many outs gotcha. I have to play with. On, on how you have to approach, yes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in this at bat here by Gunther, it's really crucial for him to get on. Yes. Because that saves an out, even if you advance for it, it saves an out. Three balls and two strikes to Gunther. Get on. First and second, nobody out. That is, a, I'm making a move walk. <laughs> I don't know that, but that's that kind of walk right now. Lee Milano, that trip to the mound. That is the sixth walk today by Nazareth pitchers. Waving Nick. Waving Luca Fiore in from right field. Fiore has pitched 20, has pitched 26 innings. Let's see how everything floats around here. So 
Bastion Wagner is on the field. Brennan Wagner is starting to walk out to the field. Malamazian did indeed okay. get the baseball, so you projected that correctly. I thought they might wait for him for a while just because of his defensive prowess at shortstop. But let's take a look at his pitching prowess for the junior, 6'2", 185. So on a third innings pitched on the season. That Does that sound right? That's what he's listed at. 13 strikeouts, three walks, 1.91 earned run average. So it's got to be seven and a third innings pitched to close game. Seven and a third inning pitch, 13 strikeouts. So that's the holes that he exhibits on the hill. I think we will see David Cox take Malamazian's spot at shortstop. Why they had waived their team. Now, Bernays with Academy number zero, Cooper Malamazian. So indeed, it will be Cox at short. Sebastian Wagner is at third. I should say why they waived Fiori in because. Well, let's see. Ten at first. Fiori is still in. Still in right, right field. field. But they, okay. But they waved him in. That was confusing yeah. to me too. All right. Bottom line is it's Cooper Malamazian doing the pitching now for Nazareth, third pitcher for the Roadrunners. First battery faces Cal Hansen. Last time Malamazian was tied into Hansen. Malamazian went leaping to make a catch on a scorching line drive through into first for a double play to close out the Grays Lake Central threat in the fourth inning. This has got to be a straight take right here, right? Relief pitcher that was on the field. Appeared to be. Sophomore at the plate. You know he's hit the ball well today. Hansen lined out to left, lined out to short. First and second, nobody out. Wouldn't bite upstairs. Three and one. Troy Whalen makes that gesture with his hands. Sign of a very small box telling his hitter, yes, you can swing, but it better be a fastball right in your zone. Three and two. A little pop on that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, big pitch here for Malamazian and for Hansen. Three, two. Hansen's able to stay alive because this one is going to reach the seats. So David Cox came in. He went through the order one time. Hansen was first batter. Cox face. Hansen becomes the first batter from Malamazian. Cox allowing the one run that Grayslick Central has on the board. This one is fouled back again. Good rips. Hansen came into this game with just 18 official at bats. Yeah, he's mad at himself right there. He thought he had a pitch he could handle. And I was about to compliment him for being able to waste that pitch, you know, foul it off at a ball that was up. If he gets the ball down, we know how left handers like it down. He's in pretty good swing mode right here, and he's tracking the ball very well. Pollock at second, Gunther at first. Bases will be loaded with nobody out here in the top of the sixth. The 15th base on balls today between the two teams. 
And can Grays Lake Central Rams take advantage of the second walk in succession by Nazareth pitching? Last time Sam Cooper came to the plate, he doubled to lead off the fifth inning. And you know what? Cooper is going to sound pretty crazy. There's nobody out. If he gets a base rip right here, 6-3, nobody out, you all of a sudden have the score cut and you have momentum totally on the side of Gray's Lake. But Cooper's got to get that job done first. Well behind that fastball from Malmazian. On deck for Grays Lake Central, Jordan Dumas. He would be the pinch hitter for the number nine spot in the order. Right now it's in the hands of Sam Cooper. Behind that pitch. He chased above his hands two consecutive times. If you're going to get Malmazian and his fastball, you have to lay off that pitch and force him to be in the zone down around your waist. I know too, Malmazian delivers. Hard to second baseman Tomey. Second for one, relay to first, not in time, a run will score. So Cooper able to put the ball in play, he'll get an RBI. And crossing the plate is Riley Pollock. Good drop step by Landon Tomey. The feed to David Cox coming across the base, but good hustle by Cooper to beat that throw and keep the inning alive, pick up the RBI as you mentioned and move the line right here. Gunther moves to third. Once again, a pinch hitter. Jordan Dumas, a pinch hitter in the number nine spot. Now batting with a six to two difference. Troy Whalen just did a signal for exactly what you and I just talked about. Lose him, make him get it down, make him get it down. Dumas, 286 hitter on the season. That back foot is all the way on the back edge of that batter's box. 2 0, oh, and he's going to be taking right here. Straight take. Well, a little hand flash yes. from Whalen down at third. No secret, he could have he just yelled, you're taken. <laughs> Doesn't make it any easier on the pitcher. And that's right on the inside corner. Dumas, 6'1", 175 pound junior. One gone in the inning. Three balls and a strike. Top of the order. Up next. Dumas finds a fastball down. He'll swing. If he's disciplined, he'll lay off anything above his hands, even if it would be the high end of the strike zone. Dumas took a good hack at it. It was right there. Yeah, that's a pitch he wanted. Like his approach. Now Malmazian has to come again on three and two. Maybe the have bad of the game to this point right here. Pinch hitter Jordan Dumas. Again he fouls it off. So Dumas right now is doing his job. He got the ball three. He forced Malamazian to come in. He got a fastball he liked. He fouled it off. And that was another pitch by Malamazian in the zone. He fouled it off. And he's putting the pressure back on Connor to continue to pound the strike zone. Yeah. 
Got him looking. Fastball right there for out number two. Back to the top of the order at Jack Gerbasi. Braves Lake Central will not be happy with just one run this inning. Gerbasi needs to drive one home here. Looking for his first hit today. First breaking ball, I believe we've seen. Yeah, he, he did not have command of that. Uh, at the very first two batters of this inning we saw, it. then he just disdained it completely. And that makes him much more complete right there. Just putting that in the minds of the Ram hitters. Trabasi is able to hold up. Wanted to go back to back with that pitch. It's the man you'd want at the plate here. Nobody advances. Cooper Malamazian, third pitcher of the day for the Roadrunners. Line drive, slicing foul. That looked good for a while. And then had that spin that just took it away. Wasn't hit hard. Ball a line, goes a line. He just couldn't keep that one fair. As you're right, the seams of that ball started to spin him. Rally hats are pretty active in the Ram dugout right now. Three balls and two strikes with two outs. That means Hooper at first will be on the move. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here in the sixth. Trabasi. He will walk, the bases will be loaded. And the tying run is walking to the plate. Interesting, he went breaking ball there. Yes, indeed, he would have got a punch out if he would have been able to command it, just because I guarantee you, Gervasi was sitting on a fastball, but instead, he skipped that one in. Gervasi with great plate discipline and the drama builds. Luke Mudd with the bases loaded. Mudd with a hit today. And there's the curveball for the strike. If Mudd hits this ball with any authority up the middle, he has a chance to clear the bases. Shaded to the right. He'll go right side, giving ground is Fioria, right near the line. Can't handle the ball in foul territory, oh my. He had tracked it very well and couldn't make the catch. I think he, in his mind, thought he was running out of real estate, getting closer to the wall. And another opportunity right now for Luke. Mud to do some damage. Both sets of fans, dugouts, willing their team here on an 0-2 pitch with two outs. Just a bit high. <laughs> Nazareth fans, they want a strike call called out no matter where the pitch is at right now, and that's understandable. If I'm a fan, I do as well.
with the bases loaded. Down by four. That just misses outside. Two balls, two strikes. Malamazian thought he had that one. Luke Mudd at the plate. You almost got to go to ball three, right? <laughs> you definitely have to go to ball three. Just for the excitement of this game. Oh, my goodness. It's turned into a fun one. Don't go away. The pitch. The curveball. And there is ball three. Woo. Nazareth bench not ecstatic with that lack of right hand. I like that really good timeout by Roche right here for his pitcher. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Top of the sixth in your 3A championship game. Luke Mudd at the plate. Cooper Malamazian on the mound. The crowd on its feet. High, right side. Tommy drifting over, a little trouble. Fiore calls him off and makes the catch. Malamazian gets out of it. It was a tight rope act. One run is all that Grays Lake Central is able to get. They leave three. They've left five in the last two innings. But it will be Nazareth batting in the bottom of the sixth with a four-run lead. Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! <laughs> As with all of our games here this weekend in Joliet, today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of this event right to your computer. We still have 4A baseball to be played. That game was scheduled to start 16 minutes from now. Ain't gonna happen. It will be York taking on Nutria for third place in 3A. And just as Nazareth Academy is looking to win back-to-back -back state baseball titles. That will be the case when Edwardsville plays Brother Rice tonight in our nightcap. We will start the bottom of the sixth inning with Nick Tortina to lead things off. For the Roadrunners from Nazareth Academy. 33 wins, six losses. Started the season on a 17 game or an 18 game winning streak. Colin Cornett still on the mound. Thirteena jammed. The ball actually came back just a bit. Thirteena was just waiting in the box. Had that been dirt, he'd have been down the line. Yeah. And Cal Hansen usually say, get it when it's foul. Mm -hmm. He saw Thirteena wasn't running, so he let it roll. Casey was very could have picked it up if it would have turned fair and got the out. That nearly clipped the bat of Dirtina. And again. You know, you talked about Nazareth leaving so many runners on early and middle innings of this game. It really seemed like Grays Lake Central Rams were boom, right back in it. And after all that, they really only put one run up on the board. Mm -hmm. Dertina sends this to center field. Mudd is there. One gone. Go, 
Luca Fiore, left-hander, warming up in the pen for the Roadrunners. I remember when, before they made the move to Malamazian, Fiore was being waved in as under consideration for a pitching change. David Cox, a single, sandwiched between a couple of strikeouts. Cox also got some pitching work in, facing nine batters. This one's hit hard. This one's hit high. This one's hit deep. This one is gone. A bomb from David Cox. My, oh my. Light up the scoreboard, because that was indeed a bomb. And it was honestly, I was looking forward to your call, <laughs> because we all knew it was gone. That landed way up on the concourse. And the celebration continues. The football helmet, Dave, is out. And the home run ring is around his neck. Right outside the Nazareth dugout, David Cox will be the last one to go back in. And there'll be a pitching change for Grays Lake Central as I'm trying to calculate what that approximate distance could be. It's 348 down the line. Boy, that's another. Oh my goodness, that was a bomb. 50, 60 feet beyond that. He might have hit that, he might have hit that 430 feet. Mm. That was a blast. You know how you, you, you know a ball's off the bat and you think it's got a chance? Uh-uh. That one was just absolutely crushed, gone, goodbye. From the get-go, just where was it going to land? And you don't see, especially in high school baseball, you don't see a left field like Gerbasi right there. They usually are chasing down home runs, right? Getting to the wall. He just looked up in wonderment himself. New pitcher coming in for Gray's Lake. He was warming up earlier. Zach Anatucci, a six foot, 280 pound senior right hander, 1 0 on the season, 17 innings pitched, has 22 strikeouts, seven bases on balls, and a solid 2.06 earned run average. That may be the highest, <laughs> longest home run I've seen in state baseball play. Yeah, you've seen an awful lot of great players go through here. And of course, Cox is gonna be one of them before all said and done already is. But yeah, you can't hit a ball with much more authority than what we just witnessed. Mm. Lead at seven to two. Antonucci's first pitch is lined by Landon Tomey right to first base. Landon Tomey has hit the ball hard all day. <laughs> that was right on the button for the fourth time. <laughs> what a terrible day, 0 for 4. <laughs> this game at some time can be unforgiving. <laughs> His dad, Jim Tomey, offered him knuckles. I don't think Landon way part of that. He's like, I can't hit the ball much harder. Two outs here in the sixth inning. I find myself still staring <laughs> at that patio area by the picnic area. This is going to be a pretty quick outing here for Zach Antonucci. Three outs away from a state championship for Nazareth Academy. Their lead has been boosted by a run. Seven to two Roadrunners going to the seventh. Hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. 
We're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. Lose! I can't hurt! Last year, Nazareth Academy won its first state baseball championship in school history. This year, they are three outs away from going back to back, joining Julia Catholic Academy as back to back state champs this year. JCA doing it in class 2A last weekend in Peoria. Jabot from Waterloo, 1A state champions. Julia Catholic Academy, 2A state champions. Will crown a third one maybe in the next few minutes. Adam Fitzgerald, Chris Rogers, and then Riley Pollock to face Malamazian. Malamazian stranded, three runners on base last inning. In fact, talk about chances, Grays Lake Central has left a runner on base in every inning in this game. We have not had a three up, three down inning in this game. Nada. We have had 16 walks, eight on each side. That could be a state record. That is the unexpected state record if it was. We may get some pinch hitters here for Grays Lake Central. I think we might. Leading off for Grays Lake Central, the right fielder, number 29, Adam Fitzgerald. Actually, not in the first one, it'll be Adam Fitzgerald to lead it off. I actually checked that. Adam Fitzgerald will ground this one to short. Cox across his body. Can't get the tag there. Will be an infield single for Fitzgerald. Really feel Cox wanting to make that play. Normally the third baseman gets a chance to range and roam at the shortstop position. And he was not able to in the air, keep his arm slot up where it wouldn't sail away to first base. Chris Rogers will step in, cleanup hitter for the Rams. First time ever. Rays Lake Central's played for a state championship in baseball. Third place in 2009, third place in 2013, fourth place in 2014. Amazing, quickly ahead in the count, 0-2 to Rodgers. Remember following this game, there will be the awards presentation for your state champions in Class 3A. Amazing, almost snuck that one past Rodgers. They are not holding the runner on at first base, Fitzgerald the lead there. The first baseman, Cortina, playing behind him. And the curveball gets him. Chris Rogers goes down out number one. The counting outs yet? Two. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Riley Pollock, single to start the sixth inning, scored the only run of that inning. Came home on a single by Sam Cooper. Up the middle, a chance for two. Cox, the throw to first. Back-to-back -back state champions, Nazareth Academy. And how appropriate and a double play ends it for the Roadrunners from Nazareth Academy. We spoke of their defense. We saw their defense. 6-3 double play. 
Nazareth, back-to-back -back state champs here in Joliet. A really, really championship caliber baseball team that was able to win by five runs in what probably is not one of their best performances of the season. That's how dominating they are and were back-to-back -back and worthy both seasons. Grays Lake Central season ends with 33 wins. They'll get their second place trophy in one moment. For Nazareth Academy, 34 and six, and two state titles. Well, that will wrap up our game coverage of Class 3A baseball. Congratulations to the Roadrunners. We still have two more games to go. It's two Class 4A games to go. Once everything is cleared out here and the awards are presented, we'll have York taking on New Trier, and that'll be followed by a 4A championship, and that will be Brother Rice against Edwardsville, as Edwardsville will seek to be the third school here in the state baseball playoffs to win back-to-back -back state championships. But in this one, it's all Nazareth Academy. The Roadrunners, your final score, Nazareth 7, Grays Lake Central 2. Stick around for the award ceremony in 3A. For Mark Lindo, I'm Dave Bernhardt. We'll be back with you for 4A baseball after this. Remember the IHSA and Illinois State Police wish to remind you drivers who use handheld devices are four times more likely to get into crashes serious enough to injure themselves. Remember distractions cause infractions. Hey, Bloomington High School football player Malik Helm says the reason he plays high school football and his teammates are his second family. The National Federator of State High School Associations and IHSA recently launched My Reason Why. That campaign highlights high school participation across the country. Let us know why you participate in high school sports or activities on social media by using the hashtag My Reason Why. Go to social media, hashtag My Reason Why. Let them know why you participate. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please direct your attention to the field for the presentation of the first and second place team and individual awards 
for the 2023 Class 3A IHSA State Baseball Tournament. Presenting medallions and trophies are members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors. With us today, Karen Calloway of Chicago, Augie Fontanetta of Winnetka, New Trier, and the Wayne Bates of Lombard, the Lombard East. At this time, let's meet the Rams of Grays Lake Central finishing the season in second place with a record of 33 wins and eight losses. And let's meet the Grays Lake Central Rams. The principal, Daniel Landry. The athletic director, Brian Moe. The trainer, Glenn Gertis. The head coach, Troy Whalen. Assistant coach, Tony Tishy. Assistant coach, Bill Schubreder. And assistant coach, Matt Formica. And now, the Grays Lake Central players. Number one, Will Schubreder. Number three, Sam Cooper. Number seven, Jordan Damas. Number eight, Riley Pollock. Number nine, Ralph DeLeon. Number 11, Luke Mudd. Number 12, Garrett Gunther. Number 14, Jacob Rand. Number 15, Cortez Behoff. Number 16, Jonathan Restrepo. Number 17, Jack Gervasi. Number 18, Colin Cornett. Number 19, Chris Rogers. Number 20, Nolan Massé. Number 21, Quinn Cleese. Number 22, Fikret Dumas. Number 23, Zach Antonucci. Number 25, Caden Woods. Number 26, Brendan Kirkner. Number 27, Max Monarchy. Number 28, Parker Greenfield. Number 29, Adam Fitzgerald. Number 31, Cam Martin. Number 32, Cherry Miller. Number 35, Connor Queeney. Number 45, Max Wall. And number 47, Cal Hansen. Number 5, Jaden Dumas. Your Graceland Central Rams runners up in Class 3A. Thirty-three, Sammy Fury.
And now let's honor the state champions. Let's meet the Roadrunners. And now, introducing from Nazareth Academy, the President, Deborah Tracy. <laughs> the Athletic Director, Mike Meadow. The Assistant Athletic Director, Kimberly Connell. The trainer, Sherlyn Carlos. The head coach, Lee Milano. Assistant coach, John Siracino. Assistant coach, Rudy Luna. Assistant Coach Jim Tilly. And Assistant Coach Michael Bowden. And now the Nazareth Academy State Champion players. Number zero, Cooper Malamazian. Number one, Luca Fiore. Number two, Sebastian Wagner. Number four, Nicholas Milano. Number six, Mac McGarry. Number eight, Jeremy Thompson. Number nine, Nick Dortina. Number 11, Colin Roche. Number 13, Matthew Uphuse. Number 15, Chase Zidlicky. Number 17, Brennan Wagner. Number 18, Lucas Smith. Number 21, Jaden Fauski. Number 22, John Hughes. Number 24, Danny Gentile. Number 25, Landon Tomey. Number 26, Xander Metke. Number 27, David Cox. Number 29, Juan Pablo Gamboa. Number 32, Finn O'Meara. Number 34, Joey Corcoran. Number 35, Cam Allican. Number 42, Jude Cortez. Number 45, Matthew Matafusco. And number 99, Cole Reistek. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would Coach Troy Whalen 
and the captains of Grays Lake Central, please come forward and receive your second place trophy.